Hello everyone, welcome to Random Encounter 265 or 265. My name is Jonathan Logan and we have kind of an interesting topic for you today. Uh, when we think of certain properties, we think of certain genres most of the time. Like Final Fantasy, for example, you think Final Fantasy, you instantly think RPG. Or uh, Resident Evil is a survival horror game. Or I guess depending on where you're coming from, it can be a uh, kind of an action game as well. Uh, Mega Man, for example, is a platformer. But there are certain times when developers want to break out of the cage of genre and they want to do something else with their characters. And sometimes it's a massive success. Uh, we've had, for example, Mario. We got Mario Kart and we have Mario RPG, which are two game series that in one form or another continue to this day. And they were both massive successes to the point now when we think Mario, it's like, oh yeah, Mario Kart. That's awesome. It's, it's a major plot point in the new Mario movie. Uh, it's in all of the commercials. But if you think back to the Super Nintendo era, that was friggin' weird. Why is Mario go-karting with Bowser? Wow. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, you have uh, like Mega Man. You have Mega Man with Mega Man X Command Mission, which although it actually got a there, it, it has its fans. It was a bit of a evolutionary dead end for the series. Um, but whenever you play one of these games, at least when I want to play one of these games, I always get kind of the feeling that they shouldn't really exist. It's like it's like you you've entered into a parallel reality where the game development took a took a left turn instead of a right turn, and you, you've ended up with something that is is the is a is a character that you expect but certainly not a genre and uh, today we are going to take a look at two such examples of games um, that have recently come out and joining me today to talk about them is RPG fans most prolific reviewer Audra. Hello. Uh, you've been on fire with reviews lately and uh, recently I, I, I put two on you that are a little bit different um, so I'm super excited to get your takes on these games. Um, Without revealing what they are immediately, I think you enjoyed one of them a whole lot, and the other one was a bit more of a mixed bag. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's get started talking about the first one. So uh, we're talking about the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, which is a sentence that I never thought I would actually say, or anyone else would ever say, really. Uh, so uh, the Sonic fan base has gotten Sonic in uh, several different ways over the last few years. They got like a they got Sonic in a Breath of the Wild inspired open world. They got Sonic with a more modern redesign a few years ago. They've even gotten like a live action Sonic with the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. But now we've got Sonic in a genre that he's never been before, which is a detective adventure game slash visual novel, which is uh, I, I mean it, it's a novel concept. Yes. Um, this was released on, I mean, technically it was released in the West on, uh, uh, March at the very end of March, but I mean, it was, it was April fool's day in Japan. And the next day we were like, oh, it's an April fool's joke, but it's not really a joke. Um, it's, it's a full fledged, uh, it's a full fledged adventure point and click style adventure game, which is crazy because it's actually from the Sonic team. They didn't. Uh, they didn't farm this out to like a small group. This is an official Sonic the Hedgehog title. Yeah, it's really, I'm surprised actually. I haven't picked up a Sonic game in a while and this one just, it really took me by surprise. Yeah, I. It, what's really hilarious about it is the reception to this game has been, as far as I can tell, universally positive. In fact... <laughs> It's been so unbelievably positive that uh, it's a clue, I think, that the fan base really just wants Sonic dead at this point. <laughs> well, there's certain story things that happen in the game, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that's all this. I kind of laughed at the trailer. I think, oh, yeah, the trailer, is, the trailer is nuts. Um, oh, but for anyone listening, I, don't, I mean, I suspect it'll be available for a while on Steam, but it's also free. So uh, if you have any curiosity about this game, you should just you know, click on it and download it to get into your Steam library so you can take a look at it whenever you want. Audra, I guess my first question about this is, uh, why why does this game exist? <laughs> like, what does it offer Sonic the Hedgehog fans or video game fans in general? Well, actually, it's a surprisingly, it's a, I'd say it's more of a casual VN experience, but it's just kind of a fun, quick, handheld type. I mean, I played on my Steam Deck and I loved it. Oh, it seems like it'd be perfect for Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. Just it's like a short little adventure that well, I feel like if you like Sonic and you like a lot of the characters, they show up in very colorful ways in the game. And and there's even like a little mini racing game that helps get over the visual novel, you know, just being about I'm talking to someone or... Okay. Um, 
you mentioned it's been a while since you picked up a Sonic game. Have you ever played Sonic the Event or Sonic the Adventure game? Have you ever played Sonic the Hedgehog games in the past? I played, um, I believe it was Sonic and Knuckles. Ah, uh, yes. That's about it. Sonic and Knuckles was a game that I remember when it came out, and I, I mean, I was a hardcore Nintendo fan when I was a kid, a Super Nintendo and Nintendo. I was, I, I was not a Sega fan. It was always really weird to go over to a friend's place and see a Genesis sitting around and be like. <laughs> Ooh, I know that plays games, but I don't know about this. Uh, but when Sonic and Knuckles came out, I remember thinking, holy crap, this is the coolest, most innovative thing I've ever seen. And the fact that you could like put Knuckles into Sonic the Hedgehog 2 using the snap-on uh, feature was like mind-blowing. It was so cool. And it actually made me jealous as a Nintendo, uh, a Nintendo fan. Um, but I have to admit, I am not a Sonic fan. Not because I don't not because I have anything against the the blue hedgehog, but just because I've I've never really played his games. And when I have, I think it, it it's such a different style of platformer than Mario, uh, which is, you know, my my uh home mascot, as it were. Um and I've never really played the 3D games because from everything I've heard, they're terrible. I've heard very mixed things about them. <laughs> Yeah, and the last few years, we've actually gotten some interesting, I guess, I guess the, the biggest boost that Sonic has gotten in the last few years has been Sonic Mania, which was like, uh, it was a classic 2D style Sonic game made by some maybe a gentleman who used to do uh, fan hacks of Sonic games and, and Sega very smartly, I think, doing again what Nintendo don't. Uh, <laughs> they hired him. Um, God, I wish Nintendo would do that with some of the uh, some of the people who work on fan games for like Metroid or uh, Pokemon, but that'll never happen. Um, but anyway, the, the point is that for the last few years, the Sonic the Hedgehog IP has, I guess, is it, slightly tarnished. He's no longer the icon that he was in the '90s, um, and because of that, I think it was uh, kind of a brilliant use of the Sonic IP to just playing a sandbox they never have before. So what's the general plot of this game? Um, basically, it starts out, you're playing a new character, um, default name Barry, who's um, starting up work on a fancy train um, called the Mirage Express, where one of the Sonic characters, Amy Rose, is. she decided she's going to have her birthday party there. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a murder mystery party. So everyone... All the Sonic characters come in and they have like their assigned roles for the supposed game. But then the train starts up after a little bit and they end up finding Sonic severely injured. But of course, like all the other characters except Barry think that it's part of the game. Mm. So they're not really taking it seriously and Barry's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's you as Barry going with um, tails throughout the cars of the train and investigating clues and questioning uh, various Sonic characters about what happened in the missing time between when the train started and they found Sonic. Of course, Miles would be the so uh, would be the Sherlock Holmes character in all of this. Yes, and Amy's the journalistic reporter who kind of just goes with her guts. <laughs> so basically, they're pulling from classic murder mystery archetypes yes they have um like uh the blaze who i believe is from an actual sonic rpg blaze the cat mm -hmm. she's um supposed to be like a business tycoon or something in it <laughs> and some of them are really into the roles like the sbo character is a He's usually a ninja chameleon, but he's supposed to be a poet, so he tries doing really bad poetry while you're talking to him. <laughs> I mean, it's actually quite, I thought it was quite clever. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really neat. It sounds like, based on what you just told me, they're obviously pulling from Agatha Christie murder mysteries, Murder on the Orient Express, for example, mm -hmm. which is a very good book and uh, several movies of varying quality. Yes. Um. Okay, well, based on what you said, there are a number of Sonic characters. So it sounds like this is, in many ways, a celebration of the Sonic IP, pulling various characters in from all of the different Sonic games over the years. Yes, I, I didn't. I don't know. I'm not familiar with a ton of them, but like, there's um Shadow the Hedgehog. Everyone's think... familiar with Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> there's Knuckles and Rouge the Bat, 
who's like yeah. a master thief. I have to admit, my full knowledge of these characters basically comes from Dorkly videos. Have you ever <laughs> seen Dorkly on YouTube? I have not. I have to send you some. You'll lose your mind. Some of the <laughs> – it's dropped off a little bit in recent years, but like some of their earlier work, they're just like little cartoons starring video game characters. They are some of the funniest little video game sketches on YouTube. I will I will send them to you. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, so it does sound like they make it, you know, the the characters are there. So if you do love Sonic the Hedgehog, you're going to recognize the characters. You're going to know what's going on. You're going to know who is who. And uh, obviously, like, for example, a, was it a ninja chameleon? Yes. Yeah, so they're going to be subverting expectations uh, with those with those characters. Do you think th- do you think that this sort of does it make fun of the IP or do they play everything kind of reasonably straight? Like it's it doesn't seem like a parody of Sonic. No, I feel like it's kind of played relatively straight. The characters are all very colorful and eccentric, and they have very usually reacting to what they say. Like I can't believe these people are actually thinking this. <laughs> Is Barry but a bear? I don't know what Barry is. He's a little critter, but I, I think he might be a bear. I gotta think he's a bear, because otherwise, that's just, if he's like a weasel, that's just weird. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I when I heard about it, I was a little bit worried that they were going to play it for parody, but the fact that they're playing it relatively straight is actually a, a point in the game's favor, and I think one of the reasons why it's been so positively positively received by everyone. Yeah, it actually it turns into a really neat little story. Like I think self-contained kind of little sonic story that's kind of about like friendship and <laughs> and is certainly apparently better than his other entries in the last few years. Yeah. Although Frontier apparently Frontier got some mixed but okay reviews. People liked a lot of a lot of what was going on in that game been curious about that one i feel like sonic games i mean it's funny because it's also a sonic franchise i feel like sonic and yakuza have a lot in common that like fans of this style of game really really like it um and but it sometimes has it has sometimes has trouble i guess appealing to people who aren't already involved in it plus i mean sonic has a lot of baggage because the 3d games especially some of the earlier 3d games were frankly garbage in comparison to what uh, nintendo was turning out yeah i've i've heard that (laughs) Hmm. I've been a little scared to try some of them. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. So, relatively speaking, looking at it, this is a it's a visual novel adventure game in the style of Ace Attorney. Really, uh, mm. it, it's is it, it's point and click. It's point and click, and you basically quest. You present evidence when you collect enough clues, and you kind of just interrogate the characters. But then, when you get into the when you're presenting evidence, they'll have um. They call it a think segment, mm-hmm. where Barry has to, like, I guess, get his thoughts in order as to why this clue is important. So he'll do, like, a little racing mini game with Sonic on okay. his, like, net gear, I think they called it. A net like, gear, that, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I'm looking at an image from it. It looks, a, it looks a little bit like the design from, I think it was Sonic Blast, like the very first attempt at making a 3D-esque Sonic game. And those were actually pretty fun. Uh, I mean, like, they increase in difficulty as you go. Mm-hmm. So they were actually quite entertaining. Yeah, I mean, this looks a little bit like the Sonic Sonic Blast game on the, I think it was the 3DX it was released on. I think there, there maybe was a Genesis version too. I can't remember. Um, well, I think that's actually pretty cool. Uh, what other kind of gameplay elements can you find here? That's pretty much, it's the VN um, talking po- dialogue tree and decision making. And the point and click and the mm-hmm. questioning and the thinking segments are pretty much pretty much it, but they do them well. So Yeah. And it's also very I like that it's more it's from a I'd say it's more of a casual gaming experience. They're mm-hmm. very forgiving if you make a mistake and stuff. So I could almost see this maybe being for like younger younger gamers too, just starting to learn about gameplay mechanics. Mm-hmm. I can see that. And I think that it's interesting how uh, it seems like it's very lighthearted in many ways, yes. despite the fact it's called the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, it's very, the whole storyline is just more lighthearted and fun. What a genius title. I mean, they couldn't possibly have gotten more free media from that title, from a title if they tried. Like yeah. the, when the, when they came up with it, they were like, why don't we just call it the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog and just let all of the news sites go nuts. <laughs> and they did. Yes. And it was great. It was a very, very smart decision to make. Um, I have to admit, I, I kind of, based on what I've seen, I kind of wish that there were. It was pulling 
a few more, I guess, gameplay elements, not even from Sonic's main title, but maybe from some more of the, uh, uh, the other Sonic spinoff titles. Like early on when I was like, you know, some spinoffs don't work. Well, one of the spinoffs that actually did work and I believe ended up in Sonic mania was, uh, uh, the mean bean machine as a, as a puzzle game, Yeah, which actually is apparently a pretty good puzzle game. Um, and you know, no, it's Dr. Robotnik's mean, mean bean machine. That's not a bad tongue twister, actually. Um, so how do the graphics look in this game? Obviously, everyone is here in their classic forms. Uh, I was looking at it. It doesn't look like they've gone with the uh, the ultra hip uh, redesigns that came out many years ago. That looks like they're they're pretty classic Sonic characters. It's very it's very classic Sonic characters. I kind of love the little attention to detail they made the art. Like everyone's in little disguises for their jobs and the murder mystery. Mm. Yes, I noticed that Tails has a little hat. Mm-hmm. And like I think Amy's wearing um like a nineteen twenties get up or something. <laughs> something mm-hmm. very vintagey. Yeah. Oh that does like she has a little birthday party hat on as well. Or mm-hmm. birthday cake hat. And the vector character, he's a butcher, so he has like ketchup stains on his overalls that they very are quick to be like, it's ketchup. <laughs> Of course it's ketchup. What I find hilarious about this is it seems like, and in recent years, Sonic has kind of, the edges have softened and he's kind of a cartoon, he's actually less edgy at this point than Mario, um, which is funny because he was always the, he was the adult, the, the cool adult uh, mascot. The extreme, Mario's li- yeah. Mario's lame, Sonic's the ultimate. And now it's like, no, he's a, he's a, he's a cartoon character, kid's character. Yeah, I kind of get that sense from this game. It's more, it's very, it even the graphics, they're very cartoony looking. Mm-hmm. Like very colorful and bright. And I mean, the characters kind of pop on the the backgrounds and everything. Is there any, are there any animations of the characters or is it doing the standard VN? Uh, standard various... VN throughout. Okay. Yeah. So various, various poses and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Minimal animation. Yeah. Which actually I think suits it rather well. I think it would have been maybe strange for them to try to do more given the gameplay that they have in it. Yeah, probably you're right. Um, another important part of the Sonic games, and I believe this is still, is the music. Uh, the music from the original Sonic games is is very well known as some of the best video game music, some of the best bit, uh, bit tunes ever made. Um, how's the music in this game? I enjoyed it. I admit I don't know quite if they used classic songs or... But it definitely, to me, it reminded me of old school Sonic Mm -hmm. music a little bit. And the sound effects for like the rain, when you catch rains and everything were just totally in line with ding. Yep. Yeah. I noticed that uh, Knuckles has three rings on his hat. I like the character designs a lot. They look a lot. They're fun. I think they were, you could definitely tell they were having fun with the, just coming up with the whole concept. Oh yeah. They've got a, there's no voice acting in the game either. So it, no. is there? Okay. No. So it's pretty much just a, uh, well, it's a, it's a, it's a friggin' visual novel. Yeah. Yeah. Standard visual novel. No, no animation, no voice acting, just story really. Just story. And then occasionally you do a little race. Yep. Uh, how long is the game approximately? I want to say I beat it in around two or three hours. So it's not very long. No, nope, it's just a, a bite-sized chunk of a game. Mm-hmm. This is my favorite kind of April Fool's joke. Like I, ever since I was a kid, and I mean, it used to be, it, it's gotten a lot better in the last few years because people are just like, I, I, I can't handle a level of bullshit <laughs> of April Fool's Day anymore. Life is, <laughs> life is difficult. It's difficult enough to tell what's real and what's not. We don't need people like uh, uh, actual, uh, actual news sources making stuff up. Um, yeah. And I hate when people do that. I, I just it, It's just not really funny to me. So my favorite April Fool's jokes is when they release an actual piece of content, um, which this very much is. Oh, yeah. I mean, I saw so many other games, gaming series during this time. They were doing like fake dating sims and other yeah. things. I was actually surprised that we got a full-fledged VN from Sonic yeah, the Hedgehog, no less. <laughs> Nobody saw this coming. Nobody saw this coming. Um, Do you think this game could have, I guess, a life outside of this April Fool's Day joke? Now, I have no idea whether or not they're going to be doing a full full visual novel, Ace Attorney style, 
uh, game starring Sonic and company. But do you think that this, based on the two, two, three hours that you played, could this game have been expanded into like a full Ace Attorney style game with like various chapters of various cases? Um, I think it's at the moment, it was a pretty good, perfect length for what they presented you with, but I could see it maybe having a bit of more life to it if they, depending on how they approach like the think segments and the perhaps like streamlining, maybe the interrogation, the point and click. Yeah. I could see it. They, they actually jokingly talk about that they want to all get together to do an escape room later. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, I love escape rooms. <laughs> so I almost wonder if we're not going to get one day, a, instead of a murder mystery, like a escape room sequel. Mm-hmm. I think that would actually be pretty darn cool. I would I would love to see uh, them do more things with this style of game. It seems like, God, based on the reception that this thing has gotten, I cannot possibly imagine that nobody at Sega isn't going, oh, we may have accidentally tapped into something here that we had no <laughs> idea existed. Maybe we should do something with it. I could see it being a pretty fun kind of Ace Attorney-esque style game series. Yeah, and I mean, it's certainly a heck of a lot less labor-intensive than their usual 3D opuses that nobody likes. True. And it seems like, again, I don't really know the characters that well, but they're cartoony, they're fun, they have very identifiable personalities just based on their look. It seems to me that a... I, I guess they, they've tried several cartoon shows, including Sonic Rush, where the, the edgy redesigns came from. But like, it seems like Sonic and his his cast are really well suited for this style of cartoony gameplay. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that if they decided to keep going with this, I mean, obviously we would cover it. Yes. Oh God, the, Mike, when I told him, hey, guess what? No, I, I don't think he heard about it. And I just, I was like, okay, we're covering this. And I added a card to Trello and Mike was like, Jono, we don't cover Sonic the Hedge. Oh, <laughs> okay, apparently we do now. Um, yeah, but this is, I never thought we were actually going to cover a Sonic the Hedgehog game, but here we are. Um, oh, he actually, um, I think he had a RPG at some point. I knew that there was pl there were plans for a Sonic RPG because Mario RPG was so successful, but I didn't think they actually did it. Yeah, I think actually Bioware may have had a hand in it. Just Hang surprising. Yeah, I gotta look this up because I—that's a—that's a piece of knowledge that I should definitely know, and I do not. Sonic the Sonic Dark Brotherhood. Sonic Chronicles. Yeah, it's a 2008 role-playing game. I completely missed this. It's for DS. Um, what, what was its reception like? Uh, around 70s. Yeah, so pretty pretty standard for a Sonic game, actually. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think like the Blaze character came from it or something because they mentioned that she travels from a different dimension. <laughs> oh, that sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if we covered this. I'm curious. I've got to find out now whether or not we <laughs> covered this game and what it got. And if not, I think I might have a retro review in the future. No, we've covered it. We definitely covered it. Uh, Sonic Chronicles, The Dark Brotherhood. Uh, a gentleman who was here before my time, Kyle Miller, covered it and gave it an, an 80. So pretty oh. much pretty standard. Yeah, and you're right. It's Bioware. That is the most insane <laughs> thing I've heard all day. And we just spent the last... That's even weirder to me than talking about... <laughs> The, the murder BN of Sonic murder the Hedgehog. Mystery. That makes more sense to me than Bioware doing a Sonic <laughs> RPG. Qua huh? Which renegade paragon choice did Sonic make? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh that is that is very, very funny. I feel like this is a piece of thing this is a piece of trivia that I should have known, but oddly I just completely missed. And I kind of love when that happens sometimes, because it's yeah. like, oh, okay. I, I had no idea that this was a thing. But now I do. It's just an it's an example of uh, it's an example of a property that doesn't seem like it would fit as an RPG, but then it does, and it leaves us all going, "What? What? What happened? Really? <laughs> yeah, that's interesting." And speaking about properties that have caused that exact reaction uh, in recent months, I really wanted to talk to you about another game that probably shouldn't exist. Uh, <laughs> At least, yes, at least for different uh, reasons, for different reasons, uh, at least an intellect intellectual property that has been in a few different genres, but never this one. And that is the Street Fighter franchise. So Street Fighter, obviously the 
a uh, very, very, very long running uh, fighting game franchise uh, that the first one came out and then the second one came out and then the second one came out for 12 more years, 13 more years. Uh, and yes. then, yeah, so the, it, it's the second one would not die. And then of course it's, it's continued on since then. They've had tons of different spinoffs. They've had crossovers, the most famous probably being Marvel versus Capcom or X-Men versus Capcom was the, or X-Men versus Street Fighter was the original, the Marvel versus Capcom. And, and that now they have like, you can play as every Marvel, every Marvel character you can think of and every Street Fighter or, and every uh, Capcom character you can think of. Um, but then they made it into an RPG, uh, specifically a mobile RPG. So uh, this is Street Fighter Duel. Um, and it sounds fascinating because like I said, there have been other there have been other genres that Street Fighter has gone into before, and like there there are some crossover characters. For example, another long running Capcom series is uh, is uh, Final Fight, which stars a few characters that made their way into uh, the oh, Street yeah. Fighter franchise. Guy and Cody. Guy yeah. Cody, I think Poison's Poison. in there too now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Hugo, I think. Yep, yep. and uh, I think Hager's been the mayor of a number of cities in this universe. <laughs> yes. Um, and they also there's been stri- there's been Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, which is a hilarious name to me because it's making fun of the very concept of Street Fighter 2. Um, but apparently it's actually a pretty darn good uh, puzzle slash fighting game hybrid. But in- to the best of my knowledge, there has never been an RPG until right now. No, I think there was um they once did a tabletop RPG. OK, but that's like the closest they ever came. That makes even less sense than this, but. Uh, okay, so uh, so Street Fighter Duel, it's a mobile RPG, so it's on phones. Uh, I think it's probably on a couple of uh, tablets as well. Um, yep, I play it on the tablet. Yeah, do you play it? What what do you play it on? Um, just a iPad. An iPad, okay. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, despite the fact that Street Fighter RPG, like off the top, you hear it and you're like, that makes no sense, and I want to play this game bad. <laughs> yes. Because it's it's just like okay that that works. There are so many characters in the Street Fighter franchise. There are so it, there's so many possibilities. There's so many special moves. Like you can imagine, like a Final Fantasy style turn based system where there's all these moves. Maybe a combination. You could use like uh, you could use the um, action the Blitz. RPG combos and yeah, or like the Blitz system from Final Fantasy VI. Um, but that's not quite what we got. What we got was a game that seems like it comes with all of the usual baggage of a mobile RPG. Pretty much. It's very much, in fact, I'd say it's more kind of like a, there's RPG elements, but it's more like, I've heard someone say it's more like a management game. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about Street Fighter Duel? Well, basically you pick between either Ken or Ryu for the, your starting character when you pick up the game. Oh, the eternal binary choice. Yeah. And after that, you advance through what they call the story mode. Which is basically them on a. <laughs> so you put trip. a lot of snark on that. What they call I the story use mode. I actually quotation marks too. <laughs> <laughs> Fake quotation marks. <laughs> but um, it's basically they're just on a road trip and they happen to fight Shadow Lu people. That is pretty much the entire plot of the game. That's it. There's no real, yeah. no real through line. Just, just the the barest excuse of a plot. Yeah. I mean, it makes the actual story modes and the games look really well done. <laughs> Which, oh, God. They're not bad, but they're not anything to really write home about. <laughs> so that's kind of sad. <laughs> well, you actually are a Street Fighter fan, right? Yes. Yeah. I actually really love the characters, and I usually like their endings. And I'm not a giant fan of the Street Fighter franchise, but I am a fan of uh, some of the lore because... I mean, it's silly because all long run, the lore of any long running series eventually goes completely mm-hmm. off the rails. And it's just like, really, this is a very complicated and is just stupid and crazy as like multi. It's like a game. It's like somebody playing a game of telephone where it's like the story changes each time. It gets a little wackier and weirder and some things don't make sense. So I, I did get a little curious, though, and I dived into a, a Street Fighter wiki for a while and was like, wow, so much thought has gone into this. <laughs> yeah. Um, how does it play? So how does this game play? You mentioned it's like a cross between an RPG and a and a business sim. Well, it's basically you um after you open up different characters as you progress and there's a draw mechanic that eventually you gain access to once you have enough resources for it. 
Yeah. Or you can put money down if you if you'd like. I didn't. Ah, mobile RPGs. Yeah, and you pull characters and you form a party of about three active part people once you've advanced enough in the story mode. And then you have like a reserve member and you have support people who just give stat boosts mm -hmm. that you can equip to different characters too. And it's then you pretty much just go into a fight and any of the fights you kind of have to try to hit the characters at a quick time event enough to get them to have a combo occurring when each character's moves like overlap hmm. and so it's you basically just use the stylus to kind of hit the characters when they <laughs> oh god and that's pretty much it it kind of is almost dependent on just the class the type of characters you have and their abilities just the outcome so it's almost like you're managing a team I almost feel like that would have been a more interesting take for the story, whereas instead of playing as Ryu or Ken, you were playing as like, I don't know, the the manager, the manager. of the Street Fighter yeah. tournament. Like the guy like the guy who or the guy or girl who's in charge of the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. And like you have to like figure out how to get these random wacky characters across the world. Like I think this would have worked very well as a visual novel, to be honest. Yeah. I like my idea. Where it's you gotta figure out how to well, like that would be fun. Yeah, like you gotta figure out how to get these insane characters through customs and <laughs> And they have to learn to work as a team and yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you can like try to figure out like affinities between various characters and their styles and like do these two people get along? Do they like each other? Does mm -hmm. their do their respective combat styles work with each other? Like that could have been really, really neat and, and like not just a small management management element either. And then they could have worked into the story because well, well talking about the story, which you say is barely there. Uh, do the characters that you pull have any impact on the story at all, or can it literally just be whoever is in your party is in your party and it doesn't matter? It really doesn't matter. Da boo. I think maybe Ibuki joins outside of the draw for me. Well, she did for me. I don't know if it's the same for another character. And so she shows up sometimes in the story scenes, hmm. along with Ken and Ryu. But hmm. that's about it. I mean, the other characters just kind of... You could have them in there or you could have them not. And sometimes you're fighting them <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Why is Poison going against me when she's actually my second party member? <laughs> this seems counterproductive. Yeah. Um. Well, does this, does this remind you of any other RPGs or is it, is it kind of like a, such a weird hybrid of so many different ones that you're just like, all right, I guess this is what it is. Or does it remind you of any other games? It, it vaguely reminds me of Street Fighter. I mean, it has like the look of Street Fighter and the music down. Mm. So it does remind me of the 2D Street Fighters in a lot of ways, but... I mean, at, at least there's that. <laughs> <laughs> the drawing aspect, I mean, it reminds me of like another Eden and Genshin Impact when I played them, but yeah, not it, really... It... I wouldn't say it's near. It's as polished as that one. Gotcha mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned it at least looks right. How does it look? Uh, bright and colorful, and there's kind of a... It almost has like a Persona 5 look to some of its presentation, which I think fits for Street Fighter, actually, like the Street Fighter art. I mean, they're doing like street art for Street Fighter 6, which I think is pretty cool. Mm. Like, I'm looking at this and thinking the character portraits themselves are kind of classic Capcom style, but slightly mm -hmm. more realistic. And then you have your sprites, which are slightly super deformed, but not really like just a little bit more exaggerated than their, uh, their traditional look in a 2d fighting game. Yeah. I think okay. that's a good way to put it. I, I really like the art for it. I mean, yeah. Backgrounds look great. The character sprites look great. Uh, it's a shame that they weren't in a better constructed game. Um, yeah. how does it sound? Pretty good when the sound actually works. I've it's been cutting <laughs> oh, off. On my, <laughs> oh, that's that's the most damning it with praise I've ever heard. Sounds great when it friggin' works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for some reason it'll cut off completely in the when I'm playing it occasionally. So oh no, that's too bad. Yeah. Um. Okay, we've been talking a little bit about what. <sighs> What doesn't work? Does anything actually work in this game? Was there anything in it that you particularly found like you didn't hate it? You gave it a oh, seventy. No. 
you gave it a 73, which I think a lot of that might come out of your enjoyment of the overall franchise and fan service yes. and things like that. Um, what mechanics in the game actually work well? I do actually think the equipment and move set evolution where you level how you level up characters beyond the fact that it's just very resource guarded Mm -hmm. it makes it works quite well i mean when you hit when you reach the point where you can get a higher level character it really can make fights go really fast Mm. and the probably the best thing about it is the strategy with the awakening system which is where you can sacrifice versions of characters to strengthen one of your other to strengthen one overall okay so you can like them to like a higher rank so that they can then get more max levels okay that makes a certain amount of sense then Mm -hmm. so it's i i I don't want to call it card game mechanics but sort of that kind of thing for upgrades and stuff yeah huh kind of kind of Mm, yeah But it's actually, that to me is probably, there's a little level of, there's a level of strategy in that, because sometimes you have to sacrifice a character you might have been using Mm. constantly, and then, but it'll make you have another character who's actually perhaps going to carry your party for like 10 fights or something. (laughs) In the review, you mentioned that there are a large number of activities outside of the main story that you actually really enjoyed. Could you talk about some of those? Well, yeah, there's, um... Little puzzle things where they try to almost act, do a little more RPG thing. And they're like, I've heard of these ancient puzzles that we can hit with our car and go. (laughs) Which I was like, yes, all ancient puzzles you can hit with your car. No, no, no. They have it all wrong. In Street Fighter, you hit the car. (laughs) (laughs) You're supposed to hit the car. The car isn't supposed to hit you. (laughs) But like the, it's actually, the puzzles get progressively challenging. They, um... Like you can slip and slide on territory and you're supposed to try to like navigate yourself to one area, but it gets harder to do that Mm. as you go. And then there's like the Supreme Fist, which is like a tower survival challenge where you just keep going. You advance a level every time, which is a stronger fight and you earn rewards through just combating that until you can't anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. And you can even, like, in a way that kind of reminds me of, like, so we can entire Chris, where you could actually send characters out on, like, different side missions. Hmm. You can actually send characters out on bounties, which then gives you rewards and stuff. So you pick which character you'd like to send on, like, a helping someone wash a car, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're silly stuff, but... Yeah, obviously. The, uh, the thing that, I guess, I guess it bothers me a little bit, because this is... This has been the move for a lot of studios that want to release gacha games where or they, they release, you know, they, they, a quick cash grab on a mobile platform. Um, and in this particular case, it sounds like you found it very frustrating with the very short bursts that you had to play it in without spending money. Mm-hmm. Like it does sound like they, they're real look, they're really looking for some money from you. Yeah. They've designed it, I think, to hopefully get you to put money down. <laughs> Because you can only advance for so long, and then you just run out of resources for raising levels to the higher. The higher you go, the more resources you need. So it's, and then you also have to. You, they kind of put a cap on how many items you can get to draw characters, which you'll okay. need to. You'll want to constantly draw characters so that you can awaken someone in your party. Hmm. See, that's even disappointing to me because I mean. So there could have been even a certain amount of imagination that could have gone into that kind of mechanic, like the gotcha mechanics, like the the in-game currency. I think it would have been very funny if the in-game currency were quarters. Mm-hmm. So it's exactly like a like it's exactly like going to an arcade and just like loading quarters into this into the machine to play for a while. Like that could have been kind of a clever idea, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of cleverness here. No, I think there's a cash currency and then there's a gem currency, which I guess makes sense because in like Tekken. I mean, Street Fighter times Tekken, they had, like, the gem system. But I don't think they put that much thought into it. Yeah, and I think that's, for me, the big difference between... Uh, I know they're in different genres, but between Street Fighter Duel and the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog is... The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog was clever. It was interesting. It did something mm-hmm. new with the characters. It was a celebration of those characters in a non-cynical way. 
Um, whereas Street Fighter Duel and let's face it, many other uh, mobile RPGs that are based on longstanding and beloved franchises, there's a certain cynicism behind them where it's like, you want your favorite character? You got to pay for it. Yeah. And it seems like this game specifically indulges in those somewhat frustrating mobile RPG gotcha mechanics. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. And it also doesn't seem, you say this actually in the review, you say, uh, uh, it never aspires to the greatness of the fighting game series it's based on. I think that's part of the problem with a lot of mobile RPGs is that they never try to be as good as the actual games. Like there's no real effort put into that direction. I feel like a lot of them are just, I mean, they're quick cash grabs that they can make up easy, unfortunately. That's too bad because like we were talking about earlier, like the idea of actually doing like slight management sim things using like actually planning out the Street Fighter tournament would be an interesting twist on it. Like there's so much they could have done here Mm -hmm. uh, to make an interesting game that they probably could have, you know, layered in gotcha mechanics in a different way that would have felt less frustrating. Yeah, I feel like there could have been, there actually is potential in a Street Fighter RPG. Yeah. Even, but just not the approach they took here is probably, I would have liked it if differently. Does it actually fit in with the canon of the games? It's kind of set around the time of the Street Fighter 4 games, but very, I'd say very loosely. Yeah, because they've, okay, again, I haven't played a game for a while, but looking at Street Fighter 6, some of these fighters have got to be getting fairly old at this point. <laughs> yes. And Street Fighter 6 is actually the, um, they have that world tour system that looks pretty interesting and maybe more like the RPG I'd want it to be. <laughs> yeah, I know that Solosi was pretty excited about that too. Uh, it looks like, maybe this was just as, like this this particular street fighter duel was meant as almost a not a placeholder something to tide people over with street fighter until they got their hands on street Mm -hmm. fighter six yeah i mean i i would assume are you excited about street fighter six yes very much Uh, so (laughs) i apologize that we're not going to be reviewing street fighter six that's okay (laughs) i could probably i could probably bring it up with mike on your behalf but i have an odd feeling that i would not win that argument (laughs) that's all right if we're not allowed to cover if we're not allowed to cover uh uh non-RPGs like that just because we really really want to um well I think that these were two interesting examples of the idea of you know genre switching essentially um before we go today I wanted to actually uh, do a, a bit of a discussion question with you just brainstorm talk about some talk about some ideas here uh and what video game series what what, what IP would you like to see made into an adventure game a visual novel or an RPG so it can be any video game series that is not a is not already in those genres. Um, I mean, and and for me, I clearly, I, I mean, most people I think would expect my answer to be Yakuza, but that's actually sort of already the case. Where there's a Yakuza Online in Japan is sort of a visual novel that uses card based mechanics for fights, but it's like very visual novel based like instead of having the traditional, you know, the, the static characters uh, switching between when you go to dialogue. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to go with Yakuza, but I think that my, my choice would be to take an adventure game and make it into an RPG. I think that the monkey Island franchise would make for a very interesting turn-based RPG. Uh, I could see that. Yeah. I mean, it's already, it has the sense of humor, uh, there's the nostalgia factor already attached to it. I would like to see that. I'd like to see how they would uh, play around with that that kind of combat. And I don't. I don't think Ron Gilbert has ever actually done a full fledged turn based RPG. I, I think he's he's touched some RPG mechanics before, but never turn based. Uh, but that that could be interesting. Yeah. Do you have any ideas? I was thinking going with like a Tekken, maybe in the Lagaya style <laughs> RPG. Oh yeah. I mean, Tekken has some very interesting lore to it in general and they've tried doing odd story mode mechanics where they have like kind of side scrolling platforming action Mm. and they've never done it very well so (laughs) i would like to see it actually done right in an rpg and they even have like customization for the characters and stuff that i could see being like fun equipment i think that the trick about this question is i mean obviously you can make any any series into uh, RPG you, like you, you can just do it but the question is will it make sense will it 
work with that property. Like, yeah, they could do a turn-based uh, Resident Evil RPG. They could mm. do it, but like, why would they? What would that get them? <laughs> what like w- would it be even possible to like maintain the horror roots of the series or? Like, what does it get them? I could see a visual novel Resident Evil game, though, if they really wanted Ooh, to lean, yeah. if they really wanted to lean into that kind of uh, the horror aspect of it, really get into the psychological horror of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that I was thinking about would be uh, uh, a Fallout adventure game. Like some of my favorite, the, uh, in my opinion, I think, you know, opinions vary, but my favorite part about a Fallout game is exploring a vault um, and exploring the vaults. And there's usually very little combat involved in that it's usually environmental exploration and telling a story and that's something that the follow games actually do very very well uh, and having played a few uh, adv- uh first person adventure games over the last few months uh the forgotten city for example or curse of Oberdin, um I, it would be really interesting to see like a full followed adventure game without the combat involved just like try to tell a story using that style oh yeah like a choose your own adventure kind of do you think that a full-on Zelda turn-based RPG would work? Or do you think that it would, you'd just be like, no, nah, I just want to play this as like an overhead action adventure game? <laughs> um, It's possible, maybe, but I kind of think it's already leaning towards action RPG. Yeah, but I mean like, some... I mean like party-based mechanics, classic Final <sighs> Fantasy or Dragon Quest style. Like it's, you got you, you have Zelda, you have like various other party members. That could be fun. There was a very interesting video. Uh, this made some big news a couple of months ago. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Did You Know Gaming? And they had this massive expose on, they had a couple, of Zelda games that were never uh, released or developed. Um, so this was this was back in, uh, this was in November, December. Uh, Did You Know Gaming? Uh, they reported on a a pitch. It was a massive pitch for a Zelda tactics game called Heroes of Hyrule, which did kind of follow that idea where uh, you had a it was a party based mechanic, but it was also it was a tactics game. It was a it was a TRPG, um, and Nintendo uh, decided not to go ahead with the project. But did you know gaming managed to get some copies of like a lot of the materials, um, and it looked amazing. Like, it would have been so, so, so cool. Uh, and then Nintendo did this insane thing where they they filed a copyright strike against them for a game that was never developed or released. Oh, Nintendo. Yeah, it was a, it was a big thing. And eventually it got reposted, which is a good thing. Um, but that would have been an interesting, uh, an interesting take on the Zelda franchise that I feel almost, like, even though I brought it up, I feel like would work more than a, uh, would work better than a turn-based Zelda RPG. Yeah, that would be... I know there was, um, I don't know if they made it, but there was actually a Ye- Ease strategy mm. RPG at some point, which I was like, that's an interesting take on that system too, just because it's usually so action-based. Yeah, I mean, transferring a turn-based RPG to a TRPG is not it's it's not without not without risk but if you can pull it off uh it works mm-hmm. very well as we have seen with just off the top of my head final fantasy tactics oh yes and i've heard extremely good things about it i think it's vanished from the public's mind but apparently one of the best games on the ds uh or maybe it was the 3ds was uh pokemon conquest it was a tactics pokemon game i vaguely remember that yeah i mean it got exceptionally good reviews i believe um it was on DS, uh, and it was released in 2012. So it was released about 11 years ago, um, or two, 10 years ago. Yeah, 11 years ago. Um, I forgot what year it was very briefly. Yeah, so, I mean, certain games, they can make that change over. I, my last one, I'll bring up one more just because it's it's a property that I have loved for the last few years, and I think everyone who has played it has loved it for the most part, which is... Uh, I think that uh, they should do a Shovel Knight turn-based RPG. Oh, that could be really fun. Have you played Shovel Knight? No, I've just heard some really good things about it. I have to recommend it to you because <laughs> it is so much fun. Uh, I don't know if Solosi's played it, but like as a fan of Mega Man, he would have lost his mind over it, I feel. Um, or maybe he has played it. We might have talked about it at some point. But no, it's they released a, a Shovel Knight puzzle game a few months ago years ago again time has lost all meaning um and it was extremely 
positively received by people. Like apparently it's been one of the best puzzle games released in the last few years. And they just released, I don't think that people are calling it a sequel, but like a spinoff that Shovel Knight Dig. So it's not like they don't like to do spinoffs and fun things with this. And I feel like with all of those various knight characters that they could do an interesting spin in a turn-based RPG. Yeah. Anyway, that's this is just spitballing. And for all we know, some of these projects might actually be into... Well, okay, no, there's no such thing as a followed adventure game. There's no goddamn way that Bethesda would spend <laughs> any time on something that did not involve terrible shooting. They could try to add it in through a think segment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like... I feel like if there's ever going to be a Fallout adventure game, that it's the modders who are going to be responsible for it. I mean, that's sort of what The, the Forgotten City, which is a game I think you would really like, uh, mm -hmm. was started off as a Skyrim mod. It was, th this guy did a, a full-fledged Skyrim mod, and then he decided, I, I want to make this into a full game. And he left Skyrim completely, and he changed the setting into uh, into Romans. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's this awesome time loop game, which is, it's just, it's, extraordinarily well designed um and there is combat in it but there doesn't need to be like it's kind of mm -hmm. optional and mm -hmm. to be completely honest in places where the combat is there it's it's so half <laughs> like eh, it, just, it doesn't it doesn't need to be there just get rid of it it's better without um it's better without and it is an, it's a first person game so it, and there is there is technically shooting in it but the shooting is in more of a puzzle solving kind of way i highly recommend it to you audra and i highly recommend it oh. to everyone out there because it's a pretty awesome game all right i'll have to add it to my wish list <laughs> yes god knows how you ever get to any of the games on your <laughs> wish list aside from pitching them to me as either retro <laughs> reviews or i mean hey if you want to any audra if you ever want to cover something just ask me nine times okay. out of ten i'll let you cover it primarily because i'll know you'll be finished it extremely quickly uh. um so uh thank you very much for coming on today and talking about these two games because they're so weird they're so weird they are they are weird they are weird but in many ways they are wonderful yes and if you are looking for some weird and wonderful things uh, i highly recommend that you visit visit our shop at rpgfan.com um we have many things in there we have mugs and t-shirts and baby onesies and things uh, all with our logo on it. And we also have new merch with our new 25th anniversary logo on it. So absolutely take a visit to www.rpgfan.com slash shop and check out, uh, check out some of our stuff because some of it's pretty cool. Uh, another thing you can do is check out our past episodes of Random Encounter. So we've actually, last few weeks have been some, uh, some interesting episodes and a few departures too. Uh, the episode from two weeks ago that we did was... Uh, we had on some parents from uh, the RPG fan staff, and we got to talk about, uh, well, we got to talk about uh, a parent's view of RPGs and video games and how you introduce your kids to uh, RPGs and video games. And I was fascinated by this conversation because it was just a, it was something that I've never thought of before. It's something that I never really considered. It's, it's, I'm not, I'm not a parent. So looking at it from that perspective was really, really cool. I, I highly recommend giving that episode a listen. Um, but we are not the only podcast here at RPG Fan. We also have Retro Encounter, which is normally hosted by Mr. Mike Solosi. Uh, and uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been playing Like a Dragon Machine. Uh, we did a, a very, very deep dive into uh, Like a Dragon Machine. Uh, again, a Yakuza game. If you like Yakuza games then absolutely check this out because it's a perfect jumping on point. It doesn't have any connection with uh, the prior series at all. It takes place in uh, in very uh, late 19th century Japan. Or is it early 20th? No, I think it's very late 19th century. Um, and yeah, if you want something else beside from that, that kind of almost is in line with the conversation you and I just had, Audra. Uh, our off-brand obsessions was just before that, and it was talking about uh games that aren't rpgs and in games that people love that aren't rpgs so really cool episode Neat. Uh, another another podcast that we have is a rhythm encounter which is rpg fans music podcast and i really need to shout this out because uh i, I was talking earlier how much i love april fool's day jokes that aren't jokes they're actual content <laughs> and we had a dandy of one this year it's called <laughs> rhythm to chocobo and in it we uh we delve into the chocobo theme in great detail <laughs> every single song in the episode is the chocobo theme 
uh, from a variety of uh, Final Fantasy games. And it was some of the most fun I've had on a rhythm episode ever because you can do so much with the Chocobo theme. It's so short and cute and iconic that you can shape it into just about anything, and they do. And it was so much fun to do. And it was also so much less work than doing that stupid karaoke episode. So I was... (laughs) I was such a fan of this year's April Fool's Day episode. Incidentally, I'm not making fun of the karaoke episode because that was a lot of fun too. It was just a nightmare to put together. Um, if you're looking for something else different, yeah, the karaoke episode for 2002's April Fool's Day is, is worth a listen. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with us here at a Random Encounter, you can fire us off a message at podcastrpgfan.com. I would absolutely love to hear from you if you have any ideas for future episodes or discussion questions. We love those or anything else you'd like to share. To be honest, it will be nice to get it because this is, I don't know how the hell this happened. Uh, somehow, podcast at RPGfan.com and Random Encounter ended up on a international pest control website. Uh, I'm not going to mention the name because I don't want to get sued, but apparently this pest control website hooks people up with various pest control services around the world based on where they are. So for some reason, this pest control website thinks that Random Encounter is a pest control company located in Oklahoma. And I, for the last couple of weeks, I've been getting nonstop emails asking me for quotes based on bed bugs and mouse killing. Um, <laughs> now, admittedly, Random Encounter would be a pretty good name for a pest control company. <laughs> but just for just in case you're listening out there, we're not. I don't, I, we don't kill rodents for a living here. Uh, we, unless they're, unless they're in, uh, unless they're, in a turn-based battle. Sewer rats. Sewer rats. Yes. If we're in a Chrono Trigger sewer, then we are killing rats. But otherwise, we are we are cruelty-free here at Random Encounter. Um, if you'd like to send me an email that does not have to do with pest control, you can do so at jlogan at rpgfan.com, or you can find me on Mastodon at Logan at mastodon.social. And Audra, where can we find you online? Um, my email is probably the best way to get in touch with me, B at rpgfan.com. Cool. If you enjoyed this podcast, please feel free to share it with your friends to help us get the word out there. And you can also rate us on iTunes, your other podcast players of choice. You can leave us a review. We love those. Well, Audra, thank you again so much for joining me today. Uh, I had so much fun talking to you about these bizarre games. There was lots of fun. Yeah. And I really liked one of them in particular. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So if anyone out listening out there, if you're looking for a good way to kill about two to three hours for free, uh, check out The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. And yes. uh, to everyone listening, whatever you're playing, have fun. <laughs>